that we have basically two demographics in, in the horse industry. We have the boomer demographic, the baby boomers, that are going to have that discretionary income now. Um, that And actually, it's not just the boomers. Our entire market is dealing with the horse industry on discretionary income. But the boomers are going to be empty nesters, or they're going to be you know, finally able to have had a great career and now able to have the money to buy what they want. Or you've got the millenniums that are going, you know, we're having, my husband and I both have a good job, and we've got kids, and we want them to do something, and we think horses are a great thing for them to do. And both markets are accessing the Internet, but they're accessing it a little differently. But especially in the case of the millenniums, one of the problems that we deal with is that they have short attention spans. But one of the things that's, that, that is constant throughout is that a bad photograph can ruin a good product, and it will ruin a good product. It can also ruin a great advertising campaign. Um, so many years ago, uh, America Online, in trying to generate uh, traffic to its website, had a came out with a great TV campaign. It's wonderful. It worked beautifully. It worked so well, in fact, that they had such a response that it shut down their servers. So there's an example of a good campaign creating too much traffic they couldn't handle it. But a bad photograph or a bad advertising campaign can ruin a good product in a heartbeat. Now, I this leads us to say, okay, well, what makes a good advertising image? What is it that's going to get people's attention? Well, there's a lot of approaches to this. Now, these approaches, the first couple approaches that I've pulled up here, I love this shot of the www.mrtire.com. What a great thing to pull up behind that car and see that the back of his truck door. Obviously, you're going to remember that concept. And I'm willing to bet that if you lived in the area where those tires were being sold, that you remember that ad. The same thing about the ad about wanted a one night stand. Now obviously both of these ads are working on your sense of humor, and humor does sell. Uh, the National Geographic ad on the far right side, uh, again, is capturing now on the emotions. Cute puppies, um, obviously spotted puppies, uh, and you know what a, what a cute concept to create uh, a scenario for people to come take a look at that program. Now, in our industry, probably the folks that have made the best use of using horses for advertising is Budweiser. Uh, I'm sure that all of you out there have got a favorite um, shot or commercial of the Budweiser horses. Uh, my favorite is, this, is of the stallion on the right when the young stallions are throwing snowballs at him, and he throws, you know, they throw snowballs at the stallion, and he comes over and bumps the tree and drops the snow on top of all the young colts. But Budweiser has done an absolutely phenomenal job of creating a marketing campaign that reaches out and touches people's emotions. And this is the thing about horses is that I'm sure if you have friends that don't have horses, they'll tell you how much they love horses or how beautiful they are or what amazing creatures they are. Of course, if you know people that have them, then the conversation's over for anybody else because all that's going to be talked about is horses. But I said, you know, that our market is, is women, and I take my pictures for women. Why do I do this? Because of the demographic of the fact that horses are, or the industry itself, is 85% female. They make a lot of decisions. Now, the, the males might be the predominant force as the training side of it goes, but the people that actually make the decisions in terms of what are going to respond to, what kind of horse they like, what kind of horse they want, what kind of picture they're going to respond to in an ad is going to be female-driven. And certainly in my, in my field, I've gravitated to the Arabians because they are more of the high-fashion models of the business. But this doesn't mean that you can't, um, all other breeds can't benefit from a different picture. And uh, my kind of approach to taking pictures has always been from the aspect of how can I take something people see every day and show it to them in a way, in a way that they haven't seen it before. And th again, the key with all of this is if you're going to market a product, your product, in this case a horse effectively, be it a, you've got to be able to get a shot that's going to get attention. Now, if you take a look at the shot of the bay horse, the second shot in from camera left, uh, screen left, 
that's more of a shot that a trainer is going to like because that shows the conformation of the horse. The halter shot of the gray horse, much the same thing, but I was looking to try and generate a little bit different shot than just standing there um, looking like a statue. And everything else was shot from the concept of an advertising, the young girl and the young lady in the upper left, yes, this was a shot as an ad, as a congratulatory for her for a show well done. And the other shots up there are, were shot from the aspect of promoting a, a show or a horse uh, or a stallion.